The biggest comfort I have this morning is the words that Paul spoke to Corinthians in uh, chapter 2 and verse 3. <laughs> that is the comfort. Where is that scripture? First uh, Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 3. That's the comfort uh, today as I stand in your presence. Um, where's my brother and the scripture? Good. <laughs> he said, what does it say? And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. So what is saving me is because, you see, I'm putting the buggy African shirts and trousers so that you cannot see my trembling and a lot of fear and a lot of weakness. Why? I feel so indebted uh, to the people uh, and the Church of Christ in the nation of America. I am a debtor, a big debtor. Something that uh, probably Pastor Matt, I don't know if I shared this with you. My very salvation came because of uh, the huge investment from America. I gave my life to Christ because of the ministry of T.L. Osborne from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, he profoundly impacted my country and continent of Africa. And so much, there's so much that took place. And he is the, not the only one. There are many other people that God has sent from your country. Pastor Matt, on fire ministry, you have been such a big blessing to the country of Kenya and to the continent of Africa. My brother, my friend, Titus and Elizabeth, Myra, I hope I'm pronouncing you correctly. Don't feel offended. We love you so much. I love you so much. I want, to, I want to request you very kindly. Don't feel offended. I want you to tune your heart to the frequencies of heaven. Because I believe there is something that God is speaking to your life today. And speaking to the nation of America. So are you ready to tune your heart? Come on, tune your heart. So that you can get the frequencies of heaven. And I warn you, I warn you from the beginning, my accent may destabilize you, may confuse you. Don't allow it. <laughs> I went for an international meeting one day in Cape Town, and I was presenting to dignitaries from all over the world. And uh, from where I come from, we don't have a lot of R and L. All of it is the same. So I wanted to say, I was speaking on behalf of Congo. I've been a missionary to the Republic of Congo, DRC, for two years, and then Rwanda for seven years, Tanzania for seven years. So I've moved around African continent. And uh, when I went there to Cape Town, I was speaking on behalf of DRC, and I was talking about rice, the food. But the way I spoke it, the dignitaries understood L instead of R. You can imagine the confusion. <laughs> so don't get distracted, amen? If you find that something is not clear, I know the Holy Spirit is here in abundance and he will make it clear to you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So don't be distracted by my poor accent. Titus have tried to teach me American English. I'm still a student. I'm still a student. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will speak heavy things that the Holy Spirit have put in my heart. And I pray that the Lord will minister to every one of you in Jesus' mighty name. Sometimes last year, I came into this place. I came to U.S., but I was going to a country called Haiti in the Caribbean. And I was in Haiti for maybe like one or two weeks, between one and two weeks. And when I was in Haiti, I think the first of March found me there, the first, first and second. And um, I was praying for my country, Kenya. I've been involved in government, also in Kenya. And so I was praying, Lord, what do you want me to do? How can I continue bringing a blessing to the Republic of Kenya? And when I was there, God opened my eyes to something that is so proud 
And he used it this morning to talk to me about the nation of America. First of all, I went to a small island called Ira de Ratetiu, the island of turtles. And that island is uh, somewhere not far from Florida. So the guy who took us with his boat told me that it is possible for him to take his boat and come through Bahamas and come to Florida. But this is the point. The nation of Haiti is a very small country with not a big population, a small country. It's incredibly blessed by God. It's a nation that has got good weather. It's a nation that has got good soils. They have minerals. They have everything. But I was so moved by the brokenness, by the helplessness, by the pain, by the number of deaths that were taking place in that place. And I couldn't understand. I said, God, Florida is just here. Next, the United States is just here. But this country, these people, they, it's, it's like daytime and nighttime. When you look at what's in the U.S. and what's happening in Haiti, and I pray for them, Lord Jesus, have mercy on the nation of Haiti because you care for them and you love them. And I ask you, continue to pray for nations. Amen? So as I was praying, this morning the Holy Spirit reminded me the burden that he, when he was putting the burden to pray for Haiti, and I was asking, why is America like this? Why is Haiti like this? I understood some facts that I want to share with you today. In 1870s, something happened to the nation of Haiti. A man called Bookman, Bookman was a very charismatic guy. But he was deep in voodoo. Voodoo is the worship of spirits. It's necromancy, and we have a lot of it in West Africa and most of Africa. My own community was made of necromants. We believed in worship through the dead people. So voodoo has a lot of worship of spirits. And this man was deep in, in necromancy. And in, in 1870s, he, 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 he read the nation of Haiti to fight against France. And we don't know, but when I read history, it is said that Bookman and the group that he was leading with, they made a vow. The French were very brutal. They were very cruel on them. And so they said, who is the opposite of Jesus? Because French came and they used um, uh, La Region to oppress them. And so they said, if Satan is the opposite of Jesus, then we take Satan. And they entered a pact with Satan and they said, if you help us defeat the people of France, we will serve you. We will serve you. And then they made a big ceremony. It's in history. I'm quoting history. It's called Buak uh, Buakiaman. Buakiaman is the ceremony that was conducted by Bookman as they consecrated all, they gave the nation of Haiti to devil. And let me tell you what happened. First and second of March when I was there, the, nation, the streets of Haiti were filled with people. They were not filled with people doing worship and praise. They were filled with people who were semi-naked, walking in ecstasy, you know, filled with demons and spirits, walking in the streets. For three days, it's a festival, a ceremony that would take three, not less than three days, walking in every street. And obviously, not for the glory of God. And let me, if you want to understand that better, in 2011, there was an earthquake that took place in Haiti. Probably one of the worst in that country. Haiti is located in an island called Hispanic Island, as you know. On one side, we have a country called Dominican Republic. But on the other side is Haiti. The same earthquake is the same tectonic plate. The same, the, the single one. On the Haiti side, over 300,000 people lost their lives. Dominican side is driving. Very few people indeed died. Very few. But on Haiti side, 
thousands and thousands. Infrastructures were destroyed. And the nation have never recovered, even from that time. Of course, because of many other charities that have taken place. Brothers and sisters from the nation of America, I'm speaking to you. I'm standing in your presence in fear and trembling. But I have a word for you in Jesus' name. I sought to understand what's the difference between you and Haiti and between you and us in Africa. I read the story of the 555 elders who were involved when this nation was being born. And I saw a bit of their history. Every one of the 55 elders and what they said and how they invited God. They were not perfect men, but in humility, in meekness, they invited God to be the God of this nation. You have a rich legacy. That's not all. Men have risen from this country that have been a blessing to all the world. I read the story of one man from your country, from New York. His name is Daniel Nash. Daniel Nash was the force behind Charles Finney Revival. You know how Charles Finney Revival has been a blessing to us. Remember, Charles Finney would walk in an industry or walk in a city and they would stop doing whatever they were doing, first of all, to repent of their sins. He carried heavens wherever he go. He carried the glory of God as he walked aloud. That is Charles Finney. But guess what? Guess what? As Charles Finney was walking and preaching, there was one man, Daniel Nash. And Daniel Nash would go ahead of him two or three weeks on his knees and on his face to the ground, pleading for the manifestation of the power of God. I saw the testimony of Charles Finney. Guess what he said? When Daniel Nash died, Charles Finney, in three, four months, he stopped his international ministry. The background, the force behind his international ministry was Daniel Nash and a few men that were kneeling down. Come on, America. You have been such a blessing to the world. You know they are Susa Revival. You know the great men and women that Jehovah have raised from this lad. And they have been such a blessing to the world. But I have this fear. And I have this cry. I love America. I pray for the nation of America. You are in my heart. Your victory is our victory. Your success is our success. In your standing is the standing of many nations. <laughs> and may God preserve America. May God preserve the nation of America. In the name of Jesus. Because through your rising, many will continue to rise. In the name of Jesus. And I declare you will not fall. You will rise. You will live and declare the goodness of God. You are still needed. You are needed in Africa. You are needed in Europe. You are needed in Asia. You are needed all over. You are needed in China, mom. And don't give up. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit put in my heart this morning. What has kept America, despite the onslaught from hell, if you have ever been attacked left, right, center, it is this. This is dispensation, a season of demonic attacks. The dominion of darkness have attacked your country left and right. Not that we are not attacked. We are also all over the world. But when you see the onslaught, when you see the demonic forces trying to pull down America, I wanted to understand, and I think today I understood. Oh, we have a remnant. We have a remnant. We have a remnant. Do you remember David had such a friendship with God? An intimate, close friendship with God. And because of his righteousness, <laughs> because of the investment in the relationship that he had with God, Solomon came, and this is the tricky part of the heavenly disclosure that the Lord put in my heart today. Solomon came and he did so much evil. Solomon married so many wives and concubines, and eventually they started turning his heart away 
from the God of his father. But there is something called the sure masses of David. You know it? The sure mass. God had entered a covenant with David that he would forever be merciful. And he said, even when you're a son, delay, I'm not going to reject him the way I did to Saul. I'm not going to do it because of what David did. So Solomon was living on the credit. You know, if you have telephones, we have some credit, you know. I don't know whether how you call it here, but, uh, you know, in Kenya we have uh, credits. You know, you put on your money and that gives you some, some credit. Then you can continue to use it. You can continue to use it. It's not depleted. So do you know Solomon was using the masses that has been invested through the investment of David? And he continued depleting it. He continued, by the time he left the throne, Rehoboam, his son, you know, the wicked, his arrogance and pride caused the nation to be cut into pieces. You remember that? You remember that? But the masses that God had promised David did not stop there. He continued many years later, many years later. You Americans, my brothers and sisters, you are operating from the credit because of the forefathers who loved God and because of the remnant. I pray that that credit of masses will not be depleted in the name of Jesus. That credit will not be depleted in Jesus' mighty name. And so today, I have an encouragement for you, the message that the Lord has put in my heart. Are you ready? It's about priesthood. One, there are many dimensions of priesthood, but I will be looking at only one of those dimensions. Doesn't the scripture say, the Bible says something very interesting. It says, Saviors, Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 21. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 21. Listen to this. It says, Saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the mountain of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Salvation is not going to come from White House. Salvation is not going to come from any other place. Salvation for your country and for the world will come from Mount Zion. Amen? Saviors. Listen, savior, it's not a savior. Are you there? Am I speaking to saviors from Mount Zion? Saviors will come up <laughs> on Mount Zion. Eh? And they will do judgment <laughs> on the kingdom of darkness. Eh? Are you ready to condemn the dominion of darkness? And they will declare, the kingdom shall be the Lord's forever. That's what the scripture says. And you know, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 and 24, what does the Bible say? We have not come to Mount Zion, Mount Sinai, but we have come, this is Hebrews chapter uh, 12 and verse 22 up to 24. It says, we have come to Mount Zion. If you indeed you don't know our location, our spiritual location, we have come to Mount Zion. <laughs> the city of the living God. To the heavenly Jerusalem. To the thousands upon thousands, companies of angels in joyful assembly. Is that true? That's where we are. Come on, tell your neighbor, we, this is where we are. It does not say that we will come. It says we are there right now. Our operation in the spirit is not America. We are not in Spokane. We are operating in the spiritual realm, a place called Zion. Amen? And we join the angels. If you look at it, it says, to the, 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 to, uh, we, we have come unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to immunerable company of angels. <laughs> Let's keep going. Let's keep going. It says, to the general assembly, the church of the firstborn. That's who we are. We are the church of the firstborn. His name is Jesus Christ. Whose names are written in heaven. Our names are written there. And we have come to God who is judge. The judge of all. He is the God. He is the judge of whites and blacks. He is the judge of brown and blue. He is the judge of continents. He is the judge of everybody. He is the judge of all. And we have come to spirits of just men who have been made perfect. Amen. We have come to Jesus. We have come to Jesus, the mediator 
of the new and everlasting covenant. Is that true? He's the mediator of the new covenant. And we have come to the blood of the sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. This is our location. <laughs> and saviors will come from Zion. Businesses will be saved. But saviors will come from Zion. Thank you, Pastor Matt, for that prayer. The salvation for our education system, saviors will come from Zion. So I want you to know, wherever the Lord has praised you, he has strategically positioned you there so that he can manifest his love, his majesty, his glory. If you are an educationist there, it's not by mistake. Saviors will come from Zion. And he will be put in strategic places, in business, in education, you know, in government, in government. They will be put in, 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 a, in, a, in a, the leisure industry, entertainment industry. Saviors will come from Mount Zion. That is our location. And what does the Bible say in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 and 3? It says, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. <laughs> it will be exalted above the hills. All the nations will stream to it. And it continues to say, many people will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. When we manifest God in the various domains and spheres that we have been planted, then the nations will come. The nations will bow. That it is. Yes. It is Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. You can see. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, this is my text this morning. The Holy Spirit, two, three days ago, he spoke to me very clearly from Isaiah 62, verse 6 and 12. Isaiah 62, this is what the Bible says. Oh, this is a good one. I have, if you can read together, if we can read together, I have, watchmen. Not yet. Continue. Let's stop it there, but uh, the way you have read it, can we repeat one more time? <laughs> okay, not yet lunchtime. So Isaiah 62 from verse 6, what does it say? I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. We shall never hold their peace day or night. He that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a place in the earth. Can we change the fashion? Put in the other way. NIV now, if you can. Put NIV. Let's look at it. This is the comfort that God is giving the people of America and the people of our generation. Listen, he's saying, I have done something. <laughs> I have done something. <laughs> what has God done? He says, let's read it one more time. This is, I suppose this is NIV. He says, I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Come on. Oh, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. 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 I like that peace that gives yourself. Some people are giving themselves rest. Some people are taking breaks. I say, I'm too old now. I can't do it. Or I'm so busy that I can't do it. You know, go to verse 6. It says, give yourself no rest. And God has given him, us permission. He said, and give the Lord no rest either. <laughs> That this is what I have posted. Now, I want you to see the posting. Before the posting, there are several things. Before you can do an appointment, I know there are employers here. Before you do the appointment, first of all, you do the recruitment. Then you do the ordination, the preparation, the equipping. And then you do the posting. This is what the Lord has done. And that's what is going to happen today in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm standing here for a recruitment campaign. 
I'm standing here because I know the God of ordination, the God of enablement, His Holy Spirit is upon our lives today. We have been praying that the Holy Spirit manifests in this place. He will manifest. And listen to what He is going to do. He will, He will recruit. He will ordain. And He will appoint. Amen? And listen, why? Because He says He is in need of watchmen. He is in need of watchmen. Over Jerusalem. I, I say watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. And you can change that to be anything. Jerusalem is the joy of the Lord. You can put that. You can say, I have posted watchmen on your walls, all oh, United States of America. Amen. I have posted a watchman on your walls, oh, the family of so and so. Oh, Spokane, I have, this is God's consolation. To the people of Spokane, he said, I have done it. There's something I have done. God has done it. And what he has done is to appoint, to recruit, to ordain, and to appoint watchmen and praise them over Spokane, over Washington State, in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he is so confident, I pray that we were not going to disappoint him. Listen, he says, I know them. This is God speaking in confidence. Once he has done the appointment, once he has done the recruitment, and he has done the enablement, and he has done the appointment, he says, these guys, I know them. They are men and women of substance. They will not be silenced. They will not keep quiet. Oh, come on, man of God, you're talking to me about the God. The Spirit of God is a speaking spirit. They will not keep silent. He didn't know the scripture I'm reading. But when I, I'm just about to wake up, he's telling me, you know, the Holy Spirit is a speaking spirit. <laughs> God says, they will not be silent. Are you going to keep silent? Are you going to take a break? He says, they will not be silent. And not just in January, when people make commitments on the year. Because if there is some time that people make commitments, he say, I will be doing prayers. I will be fasting. I will be doing this. January. He says, day or night, these men and women, they will not be silent. They are not going to be silent. And their occupation, their job is only one. They call unto the name of the Lord. You who call on the name of the Lord. Are you the one? Are you the one? I have asked the Holy Spirit to open our understanding so that every one of us can see the walls that he is posting us to. That, you know, God opens his heart to us and his mind so that we are able to tell which war does, is he sending me to. There are some people here who are being sent to the war called the family. Because families are being devoured by the devil. But God says, I have posted Watchmen over your walls, all families of the nations. God has a burden for families. And guess what? Today he is recruiting watchmen over families in the name of Jesus Christ. And guess what? They will not be silent day and night. And they will not give themselves rest. Neither will they give God a rest. Until families are established in the name of Jesus Christ. God is going to share his burden with somebody, not just for families. Maybe you are here, and the Lord is recruiting you. He is enabling you and positioning you so that you can stand for government. He put, you know, the way the Holy Spirit works. He's amazing. When he came to Nehemiah, Nehemiah, the, whole, the same Holy Spirit, he put a burden. And guess what? Nehemiah's burden was the wall of Jerusalem. Ezra's burden, Ezra's burden was the people, the rebuilding of the people. Everybody is different. So the Lord of recruitment, enablement, and appointment, he is at work today in Jesus' name. And he is recruiting watchmen who will not keep silent day and night. Amen? Until they refers the gains from dominion of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. So that is the text that the Lord put in my heart. It's about being watchmen. Now, factor this. Listen to this. Oh, this is so powerful. This is so powerful. I want you to listen. Oh, oh my God. Exodus 19 and verse 4 to 6. <clears throat> Exodus 19, 4 to 6. This is what the scripture says. You yourself have seen what I did to Egypt. 
and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Oh, this is interesting. You see, God did mighty things in Egypt. All the plagues, all the manifestations that were in Egypt, they were, they were specifically meant to, 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 uh, to dethrone idols, gods. There was gods in the Nile. There was gods in all gods. And all the plagues were directed to a particular god. Right? So God says, you saw what I did to, to Egypt. And how I carried you on eagle's wings. And brought you to myself. Oh, that's after he has done all that salvation, he didn't take them to Canaan. He didn't take them anywhere else. He says, I brought you to myself. And listen, why did I bring? Why is God bringing us to himself? Why did he save you and not take you to heaven? You got born again. You got filled with the Holy Spirit. You spoke in tongues. And instead of sending you to heaven, there's something he has done. Listen to what he has said. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations, you will be my treasured possessions. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you have to speak to the Israelites. He says, you will be to me a special people. The whole earth is mine. But God says, I'm looking for a special people. You will be a kingdom of priests. You will be a kingdom of priests. That's what he is looking for. And a holy nation. A peculiar people. He's looking for priests. <laughs> God is looking. And look at it. That's not the end. If you go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. What does the Bible say? 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Very interesting. Exodus 19 is in the Old Testament. Let's go to the, the New Testament. He says... Can we say together, one, two, three? Special. A holy nation. God's special possession. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness. In Oh, hallelujah. Give Jesus a mighty hard clap. You see? You see, my brothers and sisters? When God brought the Israelites out of Egypt... And he brought them to himself. And he said, I want you to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. But then, a few chapters later, you know what happened. Moses scribed the mountain. And when he went to the mountain, when he came, they had already delayed. They started worshipping the golden calf. And because of that, another order of priesthood was established. It is called the Rephitical order. Because the Raphites came to the side of Moses and to the side of God. Levites, although they had been cursed, remember Lephi and Simeon, their father had said, you are instruments of cruelty. I have nothing to do with you. But look, look, when they repented, when they came on the side of Moses, God started a new order of priesthood called the Levites, Aaron and the others. But God never gave up. He still wanted a nation, a kingdom of priests. He didn't want just Levitical, Le Levite, one tribe. He didn't want just pastors and bishops, and evangelists, and teachers to be priests. He wanted a kingdom of priests. That wherever you are, you are a priest. If you are in a business, a priest doing business, your first calling is priesthood. If you are a mother and a father, your first calling is priesthood. As you are raising those babies, you are doing priesthood in the name of Jesus Christ. As you are selling whatever you are doing, as you are doing construction, as you are in wherever, a kingdom of priests. So there will be priest, governor, priest, congressman, priest, businessman, priest, teacher, <laughs> priest, mother, priest, father, priest, driver, priest, taxi man. God wanted those priests. It is a nation, a kingdom of priests, not just for a few people. Remember the priesthood in the order of Melchizedek. The one that had been revealed to Abraham. But God never gave up. So through Jesus, through Jesus now, 2 Peter 2, 9 says, now we are. That's who we are. We are the royal priesthood. Amen? We are a royal priesthood. And then in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6, verse 5 and 6. Revelation 5. Revelation 1, 5 and 6. And it is repeated also in Revelation 5 and 10. 
Oh, I like 5 and 10 even more. They are the same, but let's look at it. Let's look at it very quickly. Revelation chapter 1, 5 and 6. It says, uh -huh. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, I like him. <laughs> to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Uh -huh. And has made us. What has he made us to be? We are a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father. This is our designation. This is our calling. When he shed his precious blood, this is what he was looking for. That he has made us a kingdom. Somebody say we are a kingdom. And we are priests. And our designation, our calling, our, our, our man mandate is to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Now, look, look. It's more powerful. It's more powerful when you look at it in Revelation 5 and 10. Let's look at it. Revelation 5 and 10. Hi, priest. How are you? Are you okay, huh? That's your designation. That's your calling. Whatever you are is to offer sacrifices to God. He says, you have made, let's read it together. One, two, three. Kingdom and priest to serve God. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> my God, my God. It's not saying they will reign in heaven. It says they will reign in America. They will reign on earth. He has made us into a kingdom of priests. And we will reign. We are supposed to serve our God. And they will reign on earth. They will manifest the majesty and the glory and the goodness of Jehovah wherever they go. Wherever they go, they carry the scent of heaven. One day, one day, listen to me. <laughs> oh, oh, guy. oh, Jehovah. I lived in the country called Dear Congo, as I said. And uh, we used to stay, we used to stay like five rows. We're not sitting in the first row. Me and my wife and children would sit in the, like the fourth or five, fifth row. So, and you know, when you get tempted, like Titus, I discovered this is your favorite spot. The other time I was here, you were there. Everybody has their favorite spot. Is that true? <laughs> so we had a favorite spot, row five. And one day, we were seated with my wife. My wife is Irene. I should have said, uh, I have a wife and I have uh, kids. I have three kids. And uh, so we were seated there. Some of them were a bit noisy. They were much younger. So we, we, we were there, row five. And one day, something happened. We some the climate. Somebody say the climate. Come on, say it. The climate. The weather. It changed all of a sudden. We are seated and we were singing, but we we could not help it. All of us, I turned to see what has come in, because a very strong perfume had entered the room. Strong perfume, and because it was so strong, everybody wanted to know what has happened. As I turned my head, I saw my wife also. Dree. And we thought we are the only ones. We saw several people turning to shake. A certain lady whom we knew, a cross friend, had just got and bought the most powerful perfume that you can think about. And you know, when you have that kind of perfume, wherever you go, Pastor Matt, you leave that scent. If you go like this, the scent follows. Strong scent. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Can I tell you, we carry the scent of heaven. Let that scent be so strong that wherever you go, wherever you go, it makes sins uncomfortable. It makes wickedness uncomfortable. Because you are carrying the anointing from heaven. You represent the mighty kingdom. Wherever you are, reign and reign for Jesus. Amen. 
he is so confident about you that he says, he says, don't worry, I have posted walls over your walls. Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, America, don't worry. I have enough watchmen. And I have posted them in different vulnerable areas. They will not be silent. I know. They will not be silent day and night until they make America, they make Jerusalem the praise of the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, listen, listen. Two things and I'll be done. Why is God raising watchmen? I'm looking at two. There are many dimensions. There are many works of a, a high, of, a, of a priest. The priests have many things. But I, the, I want to look at only one domain, one calling of a priest. And this is that watchman. Two reasons. The first one, or the two purposes of God raising watchmen, number one, it is to discern the move of God, his will, his agenda, his passion, his mind. <laughs> Are you listening to this? Two things. Two things that a watchman must do. The first one is to discern what God is saying and what God is doing. Is to know the mind of God and know the heart of God and have it manifested in the physical world. I hope you know and you know that the invisible world gave birth to the visible one. The spiritual world supports the physical world. Is that true? God is a spirit and he, it's the spiritual world that gave birth. Praise be to the Lord. <laughs> so our responsibility as watchmen over various areas of our calling is to design the move of God his will, his agenda, his passion, his mind. You know, first, sec, first Corinthians chapter 2, if you read that favorite verse of mine, if you go to verse 9, it says something. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, minds have not perceived what God has prepared for those who love him. How many people love God here? How many people love God? Amen. He says, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. But then he says, these things are revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit of God searches all things, including the deep things of God. Look at this. Even the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, he searches all things. He goes to the heart of God. He goes to the mind of God. You know the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 55, it says somewhere that your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. As high as the heaven is above the earth, so are my thoughts and so are my ways. But guess what? Guess what? The Holy Spirit is stronger than Google. The Holy Spirit is stronger than any such engine. Can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit is stronger than chat GPT. He's more stronger than, than artificial intelligence, the AI that is shaking the nations. He goes to the heart of God. He goes to the mind of God. And he is looking for hearts that are ready to connect with God. So he goes to the mind of God. He gives the agenda. of. He takes it from the mind of God and he brings it to Pastor Matt. He brings it to Sister So-and-so, Fiki. He brings it. He goes to the heart of God and he can see the pain of God. He can see what is paining. A man of God from America said, let my heart be pained by the things that pain the heart of God. Are there things that are causing pain in the heart of God? Yes, they are. What does the Holy Spirit do? He goes to the heart of God. He googles. He picks and then he comes for a ready heart and he downloads it. Holy Spirit, would you download the mind of God? Holy Spirit, download the pains of God. The agenda of God. So that we are not going to be read by the flesh, but we shall be read by the Holy Spirit. As many are read by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. And the creation is in, in agony and in pain. Guess what? The whole of creation is in agony. It is awaiting only one thing, the manifestation of the sons of God. Can we start manifesting in the name of Jesus Christ? In whichever area of life, let us manifest. The creation is awaiting and groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You can only manifest God when you get the agenda of God. When you get the heart of God, it is the Holy Spirit who searches the hearts of God and reveal it and download it. Download it. Please pray with me. Say, Holy Spirit, download it. Download the mind of God. Download the heart of God. Let me be read by the Holy Spirit. Let me, let my mind not lead me. I want to be read by the mind of God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Listen to me, sons of God and daughters of God. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. To be read by the, by, by the flesh is death. But to be read by the Spirit is life and peace. Oh, hallelujah. A carnal mind. A carnal mind. When your mind is occupied with the pride, occupied with the self and preservation, a carnal mind brings death. Death to peace, death to joy, death to breakthrough, death, death to rejoicing, death. But to be read by the Spirit is life and peace. May we be read by the Holy Spirit. This is only possible when the Holy Spirit download the heart of God and download the mind of God. In the name of Jesus, it's not about us, but it's about Him. May He be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, saints of God, saints of God. Time is not going to allow me, but allow me to give you very quick, very quick testimonies here. Do you know, this is so powerful. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 36 and 38, there is a man there. There is a, there, there is a, a, a woman and a man. One of it is called Simeon. And the other, the woman is called Anne. Discerning, somebody say with me, discerning the move of God. Say it with conviction, discerning the move of God. Discerning the agenda of heaven. So in Luke chapter 2 from verse 25, there is one man and one woman. Okay, the woman is there. Bible says in 25, that's the man. He says, and there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was on him. What did he do? It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Do you know, do you know, Simeon prayed the coming of Jesus Christ. It is the prayer of Simeon, I believe, that caused the angel Gabriel to come to Mary. They had a deal. Do you know death refused to work on Simeon? He was an old man, but he wouldn't die. He was told you will not die until you see the Lord's Messiah. He was an intercessor. He was a watchman over the nation. He discerned the times and the seasons of God. He never missed the corridor of God. Oh God, may we not miss the heavenly corridor for America and for Africa and for the world. Simeon did not miss the corridor. And he is not alone. He is not alone. He is not alone. Anna, prophetess, lest you say just men. No, it's men and women. They have the same spirit. We do not have a she spirit and a he spirit. He is the spirit of creation. He is the same spirit. And for your information, I want to remind you, he is the one who raised Jesus from the dead. He's the spirit of creation. And guess what? Bible says about prophetess Anna, he says she was serving God in prayer and fasting. She lost her husband. And for many years, she lived in the temple, worshiping and praising. And when the baby Jesus came, this is prophetess Anna, Luke 2, 36. It says, these two men, the man and woman, they discerned the season. And for years, can you imagine even before Mary was born? Now, fact is, Pastor Matt, fact is, Mary was a very young girl. This man called Simeon and Anna, they were praying for the salvation of Israel, for the Messiah to be revealed. It is right to say, me, me, prophetess Anna, and Simeon discerned their character of heaven. 
And because, listen to this, listen to this, the heavens, even the highest of heavens, belong to God. But the earth, he has yielded to the children of men. Amen? For God to work on earth, he's looking for men who are ready. He's looking for people that he's going to use. He's looking for ready men and ready women. And guess what? Guess what? God wanted to bring Jesus on earth. A time has come for Messiah to be born, but God needed men. And guess what? Because of the prayers of Simeon and prophetess Anna, a ritual girl called Mary was able to yield herself. She said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be done to me in accordance to your word. She didn't know why she said that, but behind that, some men were kneeling down, <laughs> praying for the season of God to come to pass. They never miss the calendar. They never miss the season of God's visitation. Oh, shash on fire, on fire ministries. May we not miss the season and the calendars of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. May we not miss it. May, may we be the conduit. Somebody say, let me be the conduit. Let it be that we'll be the conduit. Let me be the conduit. That God will use. To bring down his purposes. I want to finish that by looking at Luke chapter 19. Oh, come on, watchmen. Luke 19 and verse 41 and 44. What does the Bible say? Listen. This is, this is it. It says, as he approached Jerusalem, one, two, three, lead with me together with the priest. One, two, three. Spiritual slumber, because of spiritual brightness. Now let's continue the last one. The days, because of that, you have missed your season. What will happen? Uh huh. Because you did not recognize the time of God's coming. It is possible to miss God's season. It's possible to miss God's visitation. It's many times, and I am here standing here asking God to forgive me. Because not once I have had the Holy Spirit calling me to do something, and I missed, I disobeyed. Holy Spirit, forgive me. And I missed the visitation. I missed the season. God wanted to save a nation. God wanted to save somebody. And he called me at three. But I was so sleepy. I said, no, you cannot be you, Holy Spirit, calling me. He called me again. Sometimes you find yourself at 2 a.m., you're up, and you think it is because it is winter. No, it's not winter. The Holy Spirit is asking you, come. There is a business that must be done on earth. Can we be sensitive to the leadership and the guidance of the Holy Spirit? In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? 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 So this man, Jerusalem, missed the visitation. The king of glory, the Lord Almighty, was coming into the city. They missed the visitation. So what is the work of watchman number one? Design the corridor, the season, the time, the burdens of God, and download them, implement them in Jesus' name. And finally, the second work of the watchman that I will look at and see and stand and stop now talking don't get, frust don't get offended by this Kenyan. Please, don't. Are you getting offended? You know, I can excuse myself because I'm not an American. So if I do something un-American, forgive me. But I, I know I love you in the name of Jesus. I know I love you. And I also know Jesus loves you. And on fire ministry, I can say this without pumping you. You are on God's radar. You are on God's agenda. I want you to know, Jesus raised 12 men only. He, he trained them. <laughs> he prepared them. Then he sent them. Are you 12 here? You are more than 12, is that, is that true? You can save not just America, you can save the whole world. 
you can save whatever spear, whatever small Jerusalem where you are a watchman in the name of Jesus Christ. So the second agenda therefore of a watchman is to frustrate, say with me, to frustrate, to scatter, to truncate, to stop the schemes of the enemy. Now you need to understand that English is not my first language. I, spe- I, th- I, sp- I, I probably think in my first language. And then I have another language in the middle that we call the, the nation of, in the nation of Kenya, we call Swahili. And then English is my third language. And I pride, I speak some little French. Bonjour. Sava. I only speak French when there is no French man speaking. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, so, so, so here it is. I'm looking for, look at, look at this. The work of the watchman, number two, the responsibility is, number one, to say, say with me, to frustrate, to scatter, to stop, to truncate, and we can add another one, to root out the schemes of the enemy. This one I'll go very fast. So listen, may the Holy Spirit minister to you. Can you imagine, in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, 8 to 14, there was a man called Elisha. He kept frustrating the attack by the Arameans. When you are walking in the spirit, when you are a watchman and you are collectively walking and listening to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, you will scatter, you will stop family attacks. You will talk, you will stop attacks on Pastor Matt. Amen. You will stop an attack on marriages in the church. You will stop attack on our country, the United States of America. This man was in the spirit. Until the king of Aramean said, who among you, who among you is leaking our secrets? Do you know when Elisha died, <laughs> when Elisha died, King Jehoash came. Do you know what he said? He said, he said in 2 Kings 13 and 14, this is what he said. My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. That's, that's King Jehoash. When he saw Elisha died, for him, Elisha was not just a prophet. Elisha was the horsemen and the chariots of Israel. The victory, the defense, the everything for Israel. That was it. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, 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 oh. Are you ready to listen to this? Are you ready for this? This is a big revelation. This is a big one. Listen. In Acts chapter 19, when I got this, I could not sit down. In Acts chapter 9, verse 10 to 19. There was another watchman who truncated, frustrated, demolished the schemes of darkness. What is his name? What is his name? What, this man was not even called any name. In fact, we don't even know. He, is, he was, he was, a, he was, ha, 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 you my God. In Damascus, there was a disciple. His name is a disciple. One of the disciples. And what is his name? Ananias. Now, Ananias was there. And you know, he had the vision from the Lord telling him, go to this and this street and you find a man called Saul. And when you get him, pray for him to see. Pastor Matt, you know what Ananias said? Lord, you know about this man. He has received letters to come and kill the church. Do you know when... <laughs> oh, guy. You know, guy means Jehovah in my language. Only this young man knows my language. Guy. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Ananias, unknown to Saul, there were men and women of God in Damascus. He had obtained letters to come and kill God's people in Damascus. But a man called Ananias, they were on their knees. They already knew the schemes of darkness. They saw what Satan was planning. They saw the weapons of hell and they went on their knees. Do you know, I have reasons to believe, I have reasons to believe that when God appeared to Saul, who became Paul, is because some watchmen were on their knees. Some watchmen were praying. And as they were praying, God heard from heaven. And he visited this man. May God hear the prayers of watchmen in America and move to State House, move to White House in the name of Jesus. As you kneel down and pray for Spokane, may the Lord move to the mayor's office. 
as you kneel down and pray as a watchman, may the Lord move to the Congress, to the Senate, and uproot darkness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do you know Saul, nobody was preaching to Saul, but saints were on their knees. The Holy Spirit worked on him. He was a rebellious and stubborn man, but watchman over the walls of Damascus. He made a mistake, making a decision to go and attack the saints in Damascus was Saul's biggest undoing. He did not know there were watchmen who were kneeling down and praying. And guess what? In response to their prayers, right came from heaven. And the man was stopped. Hiya! Jesus Christ. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Listen to this. That this I'm going to do one scripture and then the, the last one. First Samuel 7. First, first Samuel 7. Look at this. This, this scared me. This moved me. This humbled me. Look at this man. His name is Samuel. First Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. Let's look at it. Can you, can we read together there? One, let's go together. One, two, three, go! Stop it there. Stop it there. This is one man. This is not a big army. This is not a, some people with a nuclear weapon. It is one man with heaven backing him. One man in tune with the Holy Ghost. 